Warping is a technique that is used by many photographers to improve their compositions at home in the case of a less than ideal capture in the field. While some photographers warp slightly, there's others that are literally changing the geography of the earth with their warping in Photoshop. Regardless of how you feel about it, don't shoot the messenger or the teacher in this case as I'm just here to teach you guys how to warp your images today. I'm Austin James Jackson, professional landscape photographer based in Southern Utah. In this video, I'm gonna teach you guys everything you need to know about how to warp your own images as well as show you guys a few examples where I warp images myself. I generally tend to think that I go pretty light on the warping in most cases since this effect can get pretty out of hand pretty quickly, but I'll leave that judgment up to you. Uh, you do need to have Photoshop in order to do this as Lightroom doesn't quite have the tools to freehand warp your images. Now here is the first image that I'll be working on here in Photoshop. As you can see, pretty nice sunset I got. Um, now there's a few reasons why I would wanna warp this image. Now, first thing is that this mountain right here, it's all right, but I could make it a little bit more, um, like I just remember in the field, it was so much more in, like inspiring. It was more rugged and it just kind of looks boring here. A big reason for why it looks boring is because this right side hill here, which is actually not nearly as tall as this mountain, but because it's so much closer, it appears taller. I want the mountain to be the tallest thing in the frame. I wanna get rid of this. Now, a lot of people might say, why don't you just use the crop tool? and just cut it out like that maybe. Problem is if I do that, now my mountain's off center, it doesn't look good. And then if I wanna like crop it again further from this side, I don't really like the central look there. I wanna have the whole lake shore over here. I like these trees over here. So I wanna use warping in order to improve this composition. Now, first thing you're gonna do, duplicate the background layer. You can do this by clicking and dragging on this layer over to the plus. And if you guys use Lightroom, you can really easily just launch your image into Photoshop straight from Lightroom um, so that you can do this in order, even without editing in Photoshop, all you have to do is this, and then you can save it back to Lightroom, keep doing your editing there. But once you have this background layer, you can call this warp. Now you're gonna go up to edit, you're gonna go to transform, and you're going to go to warp. You're gonna see all these lines appear. Now, I like to just back up a second uh, when I'm doing this because you're far too zoomed in right now. So I hit Command minus probably once or twice. That'd be Control minus on a PC. It's Command minus on a Mac. Um, and essentially what that does is it just gives me more room to work because when I'm warping, I wanna be able to pull stuff around without having to worry about going over the edge. Now on this image in particular, like I said, first thing is I wanna make this right side not quite as tall as the mountain. So I can drag that out. Now there's a few different ways to use the warp tool. You can drag around by clicking on the image like this. Um, I always have my other, my other hand here is right on the command Z of the keyboard so that I can quickly undo that uh, command Z on a Mac, control Z on a PC that undoes uh, whatever you're working on. So I have that there so that after, if I do something I don't like, you can see I can quickly just command Z and undo that. Um, you have all these lines here. You have a, a bunch of different points you can grab onto. One thing you wanna be careful of is that you don't drag inwards from one of the outer boxes. What I mean is go like this, cause now you can see we have some overlap here. Now what you're seeing is the background of this bottom layer. We don't wanna have that. We wanna make sure all of the image ends up um, spread out further than the original box so that we don't see any of the layer that's below. So we generally want to drag outwards, but that doesn't mean on the inside boxes you can't drag inwards. So if I wanted to make this mountain appear further away, I could click on these two boxes and I could skinny up these two boxes here. And you can see how that is making it appear a little bit further away, but a little steeper by doing that. So we'll leave that about right there for now. Now you can see this line is coming in over here. I'm gonna remove that so I'm not too worried about it, but I do wanna pay attention to it. Now, to adjust this point right here, uh, I'm gonna go Command Plus and zoom in one more. Best thing to do here is gonna be drag it um, both outwards and down. That's gonna help me to lower the height of this. Now I'm gonna just probably click somewhere around here. You can also grab from the anchor point. So sometimes I'll do a little bit from this anchor point here. You can kind of play with it and see what you like. Just gonna drag this out and drag it down. Now when you're doing this, you wanna be careful that you wanna keep things level here. One thing I like doing is using the ruler. Now you can hit Command R or Control R in order to bring up the ruler. And then you can click and drag to create a guide. If the guide doesn't appear like that, hit Command semicolon. 
that will open up the guides. You can see I actually have already created a guide here from the first time I did this. I didn't even realize I had. Essentially what this guide does is it just draws a straight line. You can do it vertically as well, which I'll show you on, a, on another image. I'm gonna move this line out of here because I don't want it on this particular photo. Now I'm gonna use the line because I wanna keep this lake level pretty steady in the center there. I just wanna make sure I keep it relatively straight. You can really mess up your horizon doing this if you're not paying attention. And I'm gonna drag that up. I'm just gonna drag this around. Now, one thing you'll notice as I'm doing this is I'm kind of pulling the whole image that way to the right a little bit. If I wanted to just drag up here, pull it back to the left, I could straighten it out. When you've got a reflection, make sure that the reflection matches, obviously, if you are using this. And just kind of drag this around until it's at a spot that you feel like works for you. Just gonna kind of push these two together here to skinny this up. Put that about right there. We'll grab our mountain, bring it back towards the center. Somewhere in there looks pretty good. You could also like maybe slightly drag this down. That'll help increase the prominence of this mountain. And then with mountains, what you'll see a lot of people do is they'll actually just drag up. If you drag up, you can make it look a lot taller. Obviously on this photo, I'm kind of losing some of my sunset as I do that, but about right there looks pretty good to me. You can hit return once you're done and that will allow you to load it out and see it without lines. Hit command semicolon to hide the guides and then command zero to center the image. Toggle the before, the after, the before, the after. So you can see we didn't do a whole lot with the mountain. The mountain looks relatively the same, but we got rid of this huge hill on the right side. Um, and so now, in my opinion, the mountain looks a little bit more spectacular. So let's move on to the next image here. It's going to be this image. This is where I'm going to show you how you can straighten things out. So in this photo, I took this because of the uh, distortion of the lens, or maybe these trees are growing sideways. The trees aren't straight. If I open up my guides here, you can see I've already created the guides. But again, you would just click and drag out if you wanted to do that. I'm actually just going to grab these guides that I already have and draw them straight. So I'm going to draw it from the bottom of the tree and then I'm going to try and line it up. I think that's going to be my best bet. I want to just straighten this tree or make it a little bit straighter. Again, I can duplicate this background layer just like that. I can hit um, edit and go down to transform. Do warp. I'm going to hit command minus to zoom out once. Drag that tree over into there, drag that there, slide this right on over. You can zoom in also if you're having a hard time seeing. So like if you needed to make the tree a little bigger at the top, the tree is skinnier at the top, which is fine. So it's a little inside the lines, I'm not too worried about it. Command minus zooms me out again, bring this tree over. I want to make sure it matches up with my line the whole way through or else it's going to look like my tree is curved, which is not ideal. A lot of times it just takes a little pushing and pulling, but somewhere in there looks pretty good. I'm going to hit enter. You can see how quickly and easily I was able to do that. It didn't really change the composition a whole lot, but now we've got before and after. Just in my opinion, makes the trees a little bit less distracting to the scene because now they are straight up and down. Now, my last example here is one that I use a lot if I'm trying to like improve the composition of my image. Uh, the composition was fine on this particular photo, but there's a couple things that I wanted to adjust. Now, where I'm going to start is this water down here. Again, I'm just going to duplicate this. We'll go up to edit. We'll go down to transform, go over to warp. Now, I want to make the water span a little bit further in the image, meaning I don't like how, this is just feels like dead space right in here in the front area. So I want to kind of stretch this out so you get more of this water. And then some of this in here is a little distracting. So I'm also going to pull that out. It's going to kind of accentuate this water through here. Now, the best way for me to do that is to just click and drag on the bottom like this. And one thing you'll notice if you drag from one spot too far, it really pinches in another spot. So I'm going to drag about that far from uh, this clicking on this box and then I'm going to just grab this corner anchor and I'm just going to pull it over. And just like that, I think that's looking pretty good. Like I said, I also want to pull this part of the image out. 
And I always like checking my corners, making sure there's nothing distracting there. So yeah, pull that rock out a little bit. If you wanted to make the waterfall like a little bit taller, you could drag this up. That'll kind of make this back one a little bit taller. And then if there's a lot of dead space in here, if I wanted to close that a little bit, I could drag from this box right here down and then drag from this box up. And I know I'm dragging inside the line down there. I'm gonna fix that very shortly here, just like that. Now we'll drag this back down and over. We'll drag this up here to kind of increase, make that waterfall look a little bit better. Drag that up over here. I'm actually pretty happy with where that's at over there, but I think somewhere about in there looks good. There's a lot of different things you can do here. If you wanted to make this look further away, you could pinch in. So drag from here and here and just keep pinching that in. You could make that look further away. So virtually unlimited things you can do here. It's totally up to you. Just be careful. Make sure that nothing is like not straight. Cause after you do this, a lot of times I see people make the mistake where something won't be straight. So you need to check and make sure everything is straight. Use the ruler, the guides if you have to, um, but just pay attention to that on a photo like this one. Of course, it's not as big of a deal because you know, we've got a river where like there's not really any lines that should be straight other than maybe the trees maybe I'll move that over just like that. Um, so you can look at things like that just to see and make sure that everything is still straight. So you can hit enter, let that load out. We'll look at the before and after here. We've got before, we've got after. You can see we've, we've pretty significantly changed this composition here. And I mean, it's still the same photo. It's just, um, we've got rid of a lot of dead space in here. It's what I really like. I'll show you the before again. There's just so much dead space that was killing me here. Got rid of a lot of that dead space and I do like the this redness of the rock. I'm not crazy about the sand in here. So we really kind of brought that out. We've made this a little bit more, um, I guess, attention grabbing than it was. So overall, that's how you do it. So that's how you go about warping your photos in Photoshop. Like I said, it's up to you how much or how little you're gonna do. Some people use this just to correct distortion. Others are using it to, as I mentioned before, change the geography of the world. So. Whatever you find uh, suitable for your images, use it in that way. Really hope this video was helpful for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you guys are looking to improve your photography, make sure to subscribe to the channel because I release weekly videos where I help you guys to become better photographers by showing you various different editing things, product reviews, software reviews, whatever it may be. So subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for being here. See you guys next time. Have a good one. Well, hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Um, I know it would have been helpful to me back years ago when I was trying to learn to warp. So hopefully it's helpful to you. Um, and like I said, you can decide how much or how little you're gonna use this in your own workflow. Don't feel like you have to overdo it, um, but use it as much or as little as you'd like. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're trying to become a better photographer. I post weekly videos, ultimately with the goal of helping you to become a better photographer. So be sure to subscribe. Thank you again. We'll see you guys next time.